We're the casket creatures. And you're watching the Son of Celluloid Show. God damn it, bitch. Son of Celluloid. Son of Celluloid. God's old, the U.S. redeemed itself. Thank fucking God. It's awesome. I thought it was amazing. Godzilla rides again. It's fucking awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> I think I would have liked to see a lot more of Godzilla, but what I saw was fucking amazing. I started bursting into applause every time I saw him clapping like a retard. It was pretty great. Best Godzilla movie since GMK. That was my second time. It was awesome. It was awesome. Awesome. I like the uh, drama on it, but the, it would sort of disjoint it, but it was good overall. I'd give it uh, like a A minus. It was two hours of nothing but terrifying fucking horror and destruction. Well, it was smarter than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I thought it was bad ass. I enjoyed the monster movie within a really shitty movie. That's about all I got. I thought it was pretty great. Um, I liked the death toll. I was happy with the death toll. What did you think? And now it's time for Great Horror Quotes with Joe's Mom. This episode, I drink your blood. No, no, I don't mean I'm going to drink your blood this episode. The movie, I drink your blood. Oh, for fu- You know what I mean. Let it be known, sons and daughters, that Satan was an acid head. Drink from his cup. Pledge yourselves. And together, we'll all freak out. This has been Great Horror Quotes. With Joe's mom. <laughs> Speaking of Devil's Rejects, you, of course, played the literary snapper, and part of the, you know, unholy duo. Did you guys, you don't get a lot of backstory on those two characters. Did you and Trey, like, did you guys come up with a backstory for you guys, or, like, kind of in your own heads, or did you just... Danny, wing it. You know, Danny, fuck, Danny's, you know, he's been in a thousand movies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Danny, Danny just, you know, does his stuff within yeah. himself. He's he's such a professional. He's an amazing actor. Yeah. Um, for me, I wrote the whole backstory, where he came from, why he was like this. You know, I normally start, because I grew up uh, from a broken family, bounced around from a pinball, like a pinball machine when I was a little kid. Um, I normally use my own backstory up to around 15, 16, okay. and then I decide where that character's going, because they are me, right. no matter what. Okay. And, and someone like Billy Ray Snapper, you know, he's a Vietnam vet. Right. He's a guy who lied about his age and got in the military at 16. You know, he's a guy that's seen so much shit, nothing phases him. Sounds like you might have a book there, man. <laughs> You know, to me, I would have already done something around that character, but Lionsgate owns the rights to that. Right. And um, I've talked to, to Rob about, like, come on, dude, get that thing back. The Unholy 2, me and Danny still look the same. Yeah. You know, and we could do a whole, because we're the only people who lived. Right. You know, yeah. so it could have its own life. I, I don't know if it'll ever happen, but it's fun right. to think about. I'd like to. <laughs> now, just honestly, who's the tougher? of the unholy two. Stop it. Oh, come on. <laughs> the year of the serial killer continues, cellmates. Some of this episode's indie horror spotlight, and I'm talking about A Dark Place Inside, new flick from Maniac Films and writer-director Mike O. Mahoney. Up until now, Mahoney's been known for his splattery horror comedies, like IBS and Deadly Detour, my personal favorite, Sloppy the Psychotic. But it appears the uh, clown prince of independent horror has a serious side, a dark side, a disturbing side. It's time instead of making us laugh, Mike says, journey with me into the mind of a maniac. 
Doomed to be a killer since I came out the nutsack. Actually, I think that might have been Dr. Dre. Anyway, the flick's about Andy. Andy was horrifically abused as a child and grew up to be a pretty horrific adult. Serial killer, rapist, necrophiliac, you know, real salt-of-the-earth kind of guy. Uh, we follow him throughout his insidious activities in the present, learn all about that painful past, and you're just going to have to watch the flick to see what the future holds for dear old Andy. Now, uh, Chris Dalby plays Andy, and there's a couple things that I really dug about his performance. Uh, first of all is the balance that he finds between playing Andy as you know, a psychologically intriguing, kind of tortured soul kind of character, but not making him too sympathetic. A lot of times in a movie like this, the killer's too likable. That kind of robs it of the you know necessary gravitas to make the story work. Luckily, that is not the case with this movie. Uh, he plays him, you know, as someone who doesn't kill so much because they love it, but because they need it. You know, kind of like a junkie who revels in the fix, but spends the rest of the time hating themselves for what they've done and what they've become. It's kind of that whole dynamic going on. The other thing I liked was the, you know, subtle nuances that he brings to it. For example, we see a lot of flashbacks of Andy and his father, who's played by Rob Dimension, a lot of the abuse that was going on there. And then when we see Andy with his victims, there's little things about his speech patterns and his demeanor that are echoes and callbacks to his father, you know, kind of a perpetuating the cycle of abuse thing. Nice touch. Uh, there's a lot of really good gore moments in this flick. The gore is top notch, but it's those little character moments where it's Andy alone with his demons that are just as powerful and really serve to drive the film. In addition to the more mature subject matter, Mike shows a lot of growth as a filmmaker. You know, the cinematography, the editing, the way he uses the score to complement the imagery. And I'm just a big fan of the way this movie was put together on a technical level. It shows a lot of skill. I also liked the relentlessly grim atmosphere. You know, it's one of those flicks, you might be reminded of something like Maniac or combat shock or something like that. You know, those flicks where the tone just kind of grabs you by the throat and refuses to let you breathe until the movie's over. I had a lot of that going on. Uh, the ending of this flick, the ending is brilliant. Uh, I can honestly say it's something I have never seen in a serial killer movie before, which is rare these days. Original ideas are few and far between. It's also one of those where you see it and it makes such perfect sense it's such a good idea that you'll think, how in the hell has nobody thought of that before? Kudos on that ending, man. That was awesome. Now, at the time this episode's going to air, I'm pretty sure that an official release date has not been announced. Uh, all I really know is that Chemical Burn's going to be handling the distribution, who also uh, did Sloppy the Psychotic, with a quote from me on the cover. So what you're going to want to do is go to either A Dark Place Inside or Maniac Films' Facebook pages like those, Follow them so you can find out, you know, when you're going to be able to see the movie, how you're going to be able to get it, and I'll make sure that I tell you here on the show when that movie's available and where you can go to see A Dark Place Inside. So make sure you keep an eye out there. Check out A Dark Place Inside the first chance you get. I highly recommend it. And support independent horror. This interview's come on the darkest bits of hell. We don't know a lot about your character. He's one of those that we didn't get a lot of backstory on. So, like, were you just playing it in the moment, or, like, in your head, did you kind of know where he was coming from and kind of flesh him out a little bit? Yeah, uh, that was part of my listening to his music to kind of, like, understand Rob's vibe. Uh, didn't really get much backstory. I just knew that we were doing bad stuff and mean stuff to people, so I just tried to imagine I was a dark, mean, evil SOB, and uh, that's basically as deep as I went in my mind, which is kind of deep because I've seen some uh, scary stuff in my life and I life and I imagine like Texas Chainsaw Massacre setting or whatever just some creepy weird family in the middle of the woods that if you cross their path or t fall into their web get trapped in their web they're going to take care of you slowly but surely so that was kind of like my that was kind of like my thought of the uh, character going through my mind
I'm Brad. I'm the writer director of Off and On. Love sick fuck. Love sick fuck. I'm a love sick fuck. No, it's a love lorn story of doctor, whore, and clown. I'm Scott Hodges and I'm playing Pong. I'm Jennifer Butler. I'm playing Jenna and this is my cock. You all know who I am. I play Dr. Claude Verpa and I'm going to do horrible, horrible things to both of them. Oh, yeah. And I have genital warts. Woo! Yeah! The fuck did I get involved You know, in this? Nathan, <laughs> one thing this subcelluloid show is missing is tits. Ooh. Nice tits. We yeah. should have a wet t shirt contest. We should. Right. That would be beautiful. Plong? The clown? Well, yeah! I, I would think Jeff would be huh? the ideal. Let's do what the yeah. fuck. Dude, oh, stop! All over. Yes! Yeah! Oh. yeah. <laughs> Sex sells, ladies and gentlemen. Watch out for Off and On coming this fall. Fuck Ty West. <laughs> That's it for this episode, Cellmates. Keep those emails coming at fromhealth13 at AOL.com. I love to hear what you think of the show. Uh, keep an eye over at www.sonofcelluloid.com. i got some coolness coming up over there in the near future. And we'll see you next time. Oh, rest in peace, H.R. Geiger. No, I'm not going to do some crazy makeup or impression to eulogize him. His incredible legacy is going to live on in the amazing body of work he left behind, and every shitty biomech tattoo you see where someone tried to copy his style. I have a feeling hell is currently being redecorated. His interviews come from the darkest of hell. Monster.